If you are a software engineer, computer scientist, PhD student or a programmer or in general somebody that is considered an information worker, then this video is important for you. Because we will talk about the concept of deep work. There's also a book by the same name that was written by Cal Newport. And the concept of deep work was also used, for instance, by Bill Gates. I will give a brief summary of what deep work is and what deep work strategies are to incorporate or benefit from deep work. And in the end of this video, I will also explain why deep work is very useful and important for programmers, software engineers, and everybody that is working in an information worker's job. But first, let's start with the definition of deep work as it is presented in the book by Cal Newport. Deep work is considered to be a professional activity that is distraction free and requires or consists of an intense period of focus. And it pushes your cognitive availability. And the output of the deep work creates new value, improves your skills and is hard to replicate for others or at least found to be hard to replicate by others. So what are examples of deep workers or persons that have used deep work in their past? It was for instance used by Bill Gates when he programmed the first version of BASIC. So the foundation of the success of Microsoft is basically based on deep work. And Bill's focus was at times so intense that he would collapse on the keyboard falling asleep, sleeping for an hour or so, and then wake up again, then just continue where he left off. Cal Newport, the author of the book Deep Work, used the technique to double the amount of published scientific papers while taking care of his family, teaching, having a full-time professor job, and writing the book Deep Work itself. So the question is, what is this deep work and, and how can you get it to also help you be more productive doing software engineering, doing programming, doing your research? In the book, he writes about some strategies that require isolation, isolating yourself from the outside work, going onto a retreat, not doing email for extensive times, Right, really blocking out all the distractions. And that's unrealistic for most of us that really have a job and need to be part of life and need to be part of this business life. But he also presents strategies that you can apply even if you have a job and need to do what Carl Newport calls shallow work, like answering emails, scheduling meetings, doing logistical tasks so basically everyone with a bit of training could do but sometimes need to be done also by deep workers or people that need to do deep work. So what are the strategies that you can use to apply deep work or to get the same benefits that Bill Gates or Cal Newport got? The first one is schedule distractions. And what that means is you have blocks where you are allowed to check email, to check your phone, browse the web, do whatever distracts you from your actual deep work. And you have those blocks scheduled, which also means you have your deep work blocks scheduled. And you are not allowed to do things that distract you in the blocks where no distractions are scheduled. This also means that you need to be prepared, right? When you want to go into a deep work phase, you need to make sure that you have all the information already available, that you're not tempted to, ah, I need to check this one email just to make progress here, right? So that you have the stuff prepared and then really are in a distraction free block. And then later on, when you have the scheduled distraction time, you are allowed to do whatever 
you want to do. The second strategy that Cal Newport proposes is to have a deep work ritual. The idea of the deep work ritual is to get used to have this stretches of times where you do the deep work and to make it a habit. The benefit of making it a habit is that you don't have to invest energy to go and decide whether you now do deep work or anything else or is now the time to be focused or is now the time to be distracted. So it really build a system of habits that builds this deep work ritual so that you basically just do it like brushing your teeth. You don't have to think about it, right? It's before you go to bed, you brush your teeth. When you wake up in the morning and you are in the bathroom, you brush your teeth. And it's the same kind of rituals that you can develop also for deep work. So for instance, the first hour in the morning, you come to the office, make yourself a cup of coffee, and then you have one hour of distraction-free deep work time. And then after that, you start your day, right? That, that would be an example of such a ritual. And what you will then realize is that when you begin with deep work and you are not trained to do deep work and to concentrate for a long time, the maximum duration that you will be able to concentrate really on one topic and do this deep work is up to an hour. Maybe it's a bit less in the beginning and then you work yourself up to an hour. And even experienced deep workers like Cal Newport really have a daily maximum of four hours. And after that, for that day you are done, you will not be able to concentrate with the intensity that really is required to do deep work. And if you think about an eight hour work day, and you really write down the things you do, the distraction times and so on, and you try to block out time, you might also find it hard to even schedule more than four hours in an average day. The third thing that's required for deep work is giving your body, your mind time to relax and to recharge your battery and to regain this capacity to focus on the next day. And what Carl found crucial to do that is a shutdown ritual in the evening. The idea of the shutdown ritual is two things. First of all, to get your mental clutter resolved, right? The, um, oh, have I forgotten something? Am I prepared for all the meetings tomorrow? Is there maybe this one last email that I should answer? To, to really get those thoughts out of your head. And for that, what he does is he goes through the tasks for the next days, he goes through the meetings that are scheduled and upcoming, the events that are scheduled and upcoming. He goes through his list of things, just checking, okay, everything that I need to do today is done. Yeah, okay, perfect, good, okay, everything resolved. And then he finishes this with the sentence, shut down, completed. And that's the sign to his mind, okay, now we are off work until the next day starts. And this really is a recommendation to be in this state where you can recharge your concentration, where you can recharge your batteries and then be able to completely focus on the topic again the next day. And I know that this might be hard to shut down sometimes, right? When you are struggling to solve a problem and then you basically have to step away from it in the night and, and, and you, you keep going back to the problem in your head, right? Even when you're outdoors or watching TV or whatever, you come back to the problem again and again and again. And then it's important to say, okay, now I'm off. I will solve the problem tomorrow. The fourth strategy is what he calls productive meditation. And the idea between productive meditation is that you use time where you can meditate or, or think um, like when you are walking to your office or when you are commuting. So down times where you really can do some meditation where you can think about a topic without being interrupted. And then the idea is to put your focus on the problem that you want to solve. And every time 
you think about something else, you try to focus back on the problem you want to solve and think about the next steps you can do. And it's similar to a meditation technique where you try to think about nothing at all, right? Um, you, you, you observe what you're thinking about and, and, and you focus on the problem, come back to the problem, come back to the problem, think about the problem. And one trap that exists there that uh, is explained in the book is basically that you think about the facts you know about the problem, but don't make any progress while this productive meditation. And there is also important to take a step back and say to yourself, we're just going in circles, reiterating what we know about the problem, but now we want to go deeper and right? we want to make progress. So what are the next steps, right? Really take this productive meditation time to think about how to solve the problem. And for me personally, that's really something that works quite well to think about technical problems while going for a walk, going for a run, always focusing on the problem, trying different angles on how to approach it. And this helps me also to make progress and, and to get unstuck when I'm stuck. So why is deep work now something that's important or interesting for software engineers, programmers, PhD students? Well, programming or software engineering in general is a lot of problem solving. And so is doing a PhD when you have to solve proofs, when you have to solve hard problems. So the possibility to concentrate on complex problems is something that is required both in programming, software engineering, and in computer science in general. And that's why deep work is a very helpful tool to get this concentration, to be able to focus on the hard problems and to be able to solve the hard problems. And if you manage to implement deep work strategies in your daily life, in your job, then they will also make you more productive because they will allow you to solve hard problems much faster than other people. Or other people might not be even able to solve them, but you will be the person that will be able to solve those hard problems. And that's something that's good for software engineers and programmers when you are able to solve hard problems that nobody else can solve. So in essence, if you are a software engineer, programmer, PhD student, deep work will help you increase your output and quality of work. And that's why it's important for you. And that's why you should try it out. I will link the book down in the description below. It's worth a try and you should read the book. And I'm now of course curious what your opinion about deep work is so be part of the discussion below. If you've liked this video, please smash the like button. And if you want to hear more about how to be a better programmer, software engineer, or PhD student, then please subscribe to this channel. And I see you in the next video.